الحمد للہ وصلاۃ وسلام علی رسول اللہ و علیہ علی وصاب اجمعین اما آباد اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شہلی صدری وسلی عمری وحل العدد من لسانی یفق و قولی ایز فار ایز دا لٹرل میننگ آف دا ورڈ زکوٰۃ از کنسرن زکوٰۃ از ڈیرائیو فرام دا عربک ورڈ زکا وچ مینس ٹو پیوریفائی وچ مینس ٹو انکریز اٹ آلسو مینس بلیسنگس اینڈ گڈنیس تو زکا مینس پیوریفیکیشن اور کلیننیس انکریز اٹ مینس گڈنیس اٹ مینس بلیسنگس ان اسلامک شریعہ زکا از این آبلیگیٹری چیریٹی وچ ایوری مسلم who has a saving or a surplus wealth which has reached the nisab level or above that and stays with him for one complete lunar year or one hijri year, he should give zakat on that surplus wealth, which is most of the time 2.5%. This is the Sharia Islamic meaning of it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 103, take arms or give charity, give zakat from the wealth so that it will purify and sanctify them. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 39, those who give gifts in order that it will increase their property through the gifts of the other person's property, it will have no increase with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But those who give charity, Seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will find an increase therein. And zakat is one of the pillars of Islam. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the book of Iman, book of faith, hadith number eight, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, that Islam is based on five principles. The first is, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There's no God but Allah and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the messenger of Allah. The second is establishing salah. Third is giving zakat, that is obligatory charity. The fourth is performing hajj. And fifth is fasting the month of Ramadan, which all of us are doing, alhamdulillah, now. So zakat is one of the important pillars of Islam. There are various words of zakat, which tell us what zakat is, even various hadith, which is the significance in Islam. Allah says in Surah Anfal, chapter number 8, verse number 3 and 4, that zakat is a sign of belief. It says that all those who believe and establish salah and give zakat, they are the true believers. That means zakat is a sign of true belief. And a beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim, volume number 4, hadith number 6264. He said that When you give charity, it does not decrease the wealth. And if a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if he forgives, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases his respect. And if he shows humility, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises his status in the eyes of the people. So charity does not decrease the wealth. It rather increases the wealth. And by zakat, There is unity and brotherhood among the Muslim Ummah. The full Muslim Ummah throughout the world is like one family. And a person cares for the others, the rich man, they give zakat to the poor, and they feel that as though they are part of one family. And the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number one, in the book of Salah, Hadith number 481, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that one faithful believer To another faithful believer is like the bricks of a ball. They support each other like the bricks of a ball. And he interlaced his fingers of his hands like that. So it brings unity in the Muslim Ummah. And the one more verse in the Quran, which describes Zakat in a nutshell. Allah says in Surah Al-Hashar, chapter number 59, verse number 7, speaking about Zakat, that it prevents the wealth from circulating amongst the rich. So it is sort of an economic order in Islam, Zakat. Zakat is compulsory on every Muslim, irrespective whether it's a man or a woman, whether adult or minor, whether sane or insane, 
as long as he's a free citizen. And he has surplus wealth or savings which has reached the Nisab level or above it. And he has that wealth or surplus amount of saving for one complete Hijri year or Lunar year. The things on which Zakat has to be paid, which is binding on a Muslim, which becomes obligatory on a Muslim. Number one, it is gold. But naturally, all these things should reach the Nisab level, then becomes compulsory. Number one is gold. Number two is silver. Number three is jewelry and ornaments which contain gold and silver. Number four is farm products. Number five is the cattle. Number six is merchandise and goods of trade. Number seven is business activities. Number eight is money or you can say currency notes. And the ninth thing on which the card is compulsory is the stock in trade. So these are the nine types of category of things on the zakat is compulsory and mind. As far as nisab for gold is concerned, the nisab for gold is 85 grams of gold or seven and a half tola gold. That is one tola of gold is equal to 11.33 grams approximately. So seven and a half tola gold is equal to 85 grams of gold. So if it reaches that Nisab level or above this, and if it stays with you for one year, then Zakat is compulsory. Based on the Hadith of Muhammad which is mentioned in Sunan Abu Daud, in the book of Zakat, volume number two, Hadith number 1568, where the beloved Prophet said that Zakat is on you, that is on gold, if it reaches 20 dinar. If zakat is not there, if it's less than 20 dinar, if it reaches 20 dinar, then zakat is fard. And one dinar is equal to one miskal. One miskal is four and a quarter grams. So 20 by four and a quarter comes to 85 grams of gold. So the nisab level for gold is 85 grams of gold. And again, it should be with you for one year. And the percentage of zakat is mentioned in the hadith of Ibn Majah. In the book of Zakat, Hadith number 1791, it's mentioned that Hazrat Shamil Allah she says that the Prophet used to take half dinar for every 20 dinar and one dinar for every 40 dinar. That means one fortieth of the portion or in percentage wise two and a half percent. So whatever gold you have with you, that 85 grams of gold or above, you have to give 2.5 percent of that gold if it's with you for one year in Zakat. As far as the Nisab for silver is concerned, it is 595 grams of silver or 52 and a half tolas of silver and the percentage of Zakat is the same, it is 2 and a half percent. A beloved Prophet Muhammad said in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, Hadith number 1447, that Zakat is due on five okia of silver. One okia is equal to 40 dirham. So five okia is equal to 200 dirham. And 200 dirham is equal to 595 grams or 52 and a half tola. So if the silver reaches the nisab level, the nisab is 595 grams of gold or 52 and a half tola. And the beloved prophet said, in Sunnah Abu Dawud, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, Hadith number 1567, that pay 140th. That means give 140th portion in Zakat. So even for silver, the percentage is two and a half percent. So for gold and silver, the Zakat percentage is two and a half percent. But then Nisab level for gold is 85 grams of gold or seven and a half tola. And for silver, the Nisab is 595 grams of silver or 52 and a half tola of silver. As far as farm produce is concerned, all farm produce are not liable for zakat. Farm produce such as seeds and fruits, such as wheat, barley, 
rice, date, raisin, coffee, cocoa, pistachio, cashew, all of them, they are liable for zakat. And the two Quranic verses we speak about that. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 267. Give of what you have lawfully earned. Give of the good things that you have earned and the fruits of the earth which we have produced for you. So it says that give of the farm products. Further it's mentioned in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 141. That what is due, give it proper on the day of harvest. On the day of harvest, you have to give it. The nisab for farm produce is five asak, which is equivalent to 612 kilograms kg, and which is equivalent to 1346.4 pounds. This is the nisab level. If it's less than this, then you should not give zakat. And there are two types of farm produce. One type which zakat is only liable on those farm produce which are used as food and they can be stored naturally without refrigeration. As I mentioned, wheat, rice, barley, cocoa, they can be stored. Zakat is liable on that. But if it's a farm produce which is perishable, like fruits such as grapes, such as banana, such as mango, all of them, they are perishable. So zakat is not liable on them. And as I mentioned, on farm produce, which can be stored, it should be given on the day of harvest. And those are perishable, you should not give. Now, there are two types of farm produce. One farm produce, which does not require any human labor or irrigation, and they are watered by the rainwater. No human labor is required, no irrigation. On this farm produce, 10% zakat is liable. 10%. Should be given on the day of harvest. And those on which Water is required by the human beings, that is man-made irrigation or labor is required. On them, 5% zakat is liable on the day of harvest. And for those items which are perishable, fruits, etc., like orange, mango, banana, grapes, all of them zakat is not liable. But if you sell and if you make a profit, and if that profit is kept with you for a year, and if it reaches above the sub level, then zakat is liable on them. As far as animal is concerned, only those animals that are used for grazing, that freely graze. And you don't have to feed them, no one doesn't have to feed them. Like camels, cows, goats, sheep. On them, zakat is liable. For other animals where the owner has to feed them with hay, like horse, etc., for them, the car is not liable, but naturally if it's sold and if the money is used and the money is kept and if it reaches above Nisal will keep you for one year, then zakat is liable. But generally, directly zakat is only on the cattle, camel, cow, goat, sheep. And the Nisab level for camel is five camels. For the cow, it is 30. And for goat and sheep, it is 40. And there's a hadith of Muhammad it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number two, in the book of Zakat, hadith number 1454, that Allah may Allah be pleased with him. He says that he'll take Zakat from the people and he gives Allah's messenger. He quotes him and says that he said that for every five camels, one sheep should be given. The nisab for the camel is five, and for every five camels, one sheep should be given in Zakat. And as the camels keep on increasing, Zakat keeps on changing. For the sheep, once it reaches 40, then you have to give one sheep. Below 40, there's no zakat. 40 is the nisab level for the sheep. If it reaches 40, then one sheep should be given. Between 40 and 120, it is one sheep. Between 120 and 200 sheep, it is two sheep. Between 200 and 300 sheep, it is three sheep. And then additionally, for every 100 sheep, there's one sheep. This is the zakat. So the minimum zakat, the minimum percentage, people think that 2.5% is fixed on everything. On most of the things is 2.5%. But the minimum is, if you have 119 sheep, it is one sheep. So it comes to about 0.82%. The lowest zakat is on sheep 0.82%. On average, if it goes above 200, 300, it is 1%. 1% 1 
for 300 it is 3, for 200 it is 2. And the average is 2.5% for most of the things. And the highest, as we discussed earlier, for farm produce, which does not require irrigation by rainwater is irrigated, for that is 10%. Maximum is 10%. For farm produce, which require irrigation, 5%. Lowest, as I mentioned, in cattle, it is 1% or 0.82%. But majority is 2.5%. So as far as paper currency is concerned, it is interchangeable with gold and silver. We should try and find out the value of your paper currency, and that keeps on changing. We can either evaluate what is the amount of currency that will reach the Nisab level, either with the Nisab of the gold, that is 85 grams of gold, or the Nisab of the silver, that is 595 grams of silver. So we should try and find out what would be the cost of 85 grams of gold in your country, in your currency, or 595 grams of silver in your country, in your currency. Now, the difference of opinion that what should we take as Nisab? Should we take the Nisab of the gold or the silver? Some of the forecasts say that take the lower limit so that a person gives zakat even though the Nisab is low. Some of the forecasts say that take the Nisab which is higher so that that gives advantage to the poor person and need not pay till it reaches the higher level of the Nisab. While other forecasts say that since silver was used as a way of trading in the olden days, so you should take the Nisab of the silver and try and find out what is your currency as far as 595 grams of silver is concerned. But this option is left. But if you really want to be more sure, then you can take the lower level of Nisab and normally silver, the rate of silver nowadays, 595 grams of silver is much less than 85 grams of gold. We should see what is the current value. Suppose you're calculating the zakat to be paid at one particular date, whether it be the first of Ramadan, whatever it is. We have to find out what is the value of 595 grams of silver or 85 grams of gold at that time. Now at present in India, the value of one gram of gold is approximately 900 rupees. That will be approximately 22, 23 dollars for one gram of gold. This rate of silver and gold will change in each country. What is the value in India will change, what's in Dubai may change in America, may change in UK, and the currencies also keep on fluctuating. In India today, approximately, for one gram of gold is approximately 900 rupees. That comes to 22, 23 dollars. That means 85 grams of gold, the Nisab level would be 76,500 rupees, approximately. In dollars, it would be somewhere close to $1,900. If you want to take the Nisab level of silver, then one kg of silver approximately costs in India 18,000 rupees. That's equal to $450. So 595 grams of silver would cost approximately 10,710 rupees. And in dollars, it will be about $268, approximately. But the rate will change in Dubai, will change in UK, will change in USA. So wherever you're living, you can take any financial magazine, economic magazine, and try and find out the rate, and you can calculate yourself. And if it reaches that level, then you should give zakat, if it's above that also. So 2.5% on whatever savings you have, whatever surplus you have, you have to give that much zakat that year. There are two methods how zakat can be calculated. Because zakat is payable when you have it for one year. So you can keep a daily record of what is your wealth above the Nisab level. You can keep a weekly record or a monthly record. So then whenever the Nisab level is above, then you have note down the date. On 1st of January, what was the Nisab you had? 2nd of January, what you have? So what you had in the 1st of January, say 1st of January 2007. So 1st of January 2008, it will be liable for Zakat. Then what you had on 2nd of January, calculate it. In 3rd of January, or on weekly basis, or on monthly basis. But to keep a record of all this is very difficult. Then you'll be spending half the day in keeping the record, which will be difficult. So it's not practical at all. The easier method and the safe method where mistake, inshallah, would be avoided is picking one particular day in the full year and calculate it exactly one year after that. Most of the people prefer Ramadan because it is the month of charity. 
and you get more blessings and more rewards. But Ramadan is not the only month that you have to pick up. You can pick up any day of the year. But it should be calculated according to the Hijri calendar, not according to the solar calendar. So 1st of January 2007, 1st of January 2008 is wrong. It should be 1st Shaban or 1st of Hajj. But since Ramadan is the most pious month, 1st of Ramadan you can take any day of Ramadan. If you take 1st of Ramadan, calculate all the assets that you have. And next year, if it's 1st of Ramadan, 1420 Hijri. Then 1st of Ramadan, 1421 Hijri. You should see what amount you have. Now, if you calculate only on one day and see exactly one Hijri year later, one lunar year later, it is the safest method. There can never be any possibility that you will give less zakat. There can be high chances you may give more zakat, but never less. Why? If you keep on calculating daily, then the level keeps on going up and down. But if you calculate one particular day of the year, which day you pick up, and if there happens to be the lowest collection, the lowest saving in the full year, yet you are paying the minimum amount of zakat. Say on the first of Ramadan, you have 100,000 rupees as saving, or $100,000 as saving. And that happens to be the lowest saving in the full year. Yet, since it's the lowest, you have to pay zakat on what you possess for one full year. So you have to pay 2,500 rupees or 2,500 dollars on that amount. It's safe. But it may be that it is the highest saving of the full year. So here itself, you may be paying a little bit more zakat, but you won't be paying less. But some people may think, oh, it is the highest saving. That means, you know, I may be paying unnecessary more amount. There are chances you may pay more, but there are no chance you'll pay less. Because even if it is the highest, and if you think that you will try and catch the lowest point, the lowest point may keep on changing. It may be in the month of Shaban, it may be in the month of Rajab, it may be in the month of Hajj. And then if you try and catch that point, next year it will again change. So if you try and catch that point, there are high chances you'll pay less zakat. So best is to pick up one point, one day in the full Hijri calendar, and keep on taking that every year. And you'll be less assured that you will never pay less zakat, you may pay more. Because if the wealth keeps on fluctuating, up and down, you have to pay on what amount you possess for the full year. Yeah. But the lowest point once, maybe Shaban, the other maybe Ramadan, the third maybe Hajj, maybe any month, the safest is to pick up anyone, keep on sticking to that year, and inshallah, you'll never pay less. You may pay more. Sometimes 10% more, 20% more, 30% more. It'll never be less, inshallah. So this is the safest method, and it's the best method. And on this day, whichever day you pick up, you have to calculate all the savings you have, whether in cash, what is the bank balance, what is the gold you possess, whether in the form of jewelry, whatever stock you possess, whether in shares, whatever investment, all this you put together, all your business, the stock trade of your business, all put together. If you're due to receive some amount from someone, even that has to be calculated because he has given a bit late, but yet it's your property. Or if you have given some loan to someone, that has to be calculated. But if you have to give some money to someone, that has to be deducted from your amount. For example, you have taken a loan of $100,000 or 100,000 rupees, and the total amount is 500,000 rupees that you have in your home, cash in hand, cash in bank, stock everything. So you have to minus from 500,000, 100,000. So you have to pay zakat on 400,000. But if you possess 500,000 and you have given loan of $200,000 to somebody else and you have to receive $100,000 because of goods you have sold, so 500 plus 200,000 plus 100,000, you have to pay zakat on $800,000. So in all, you have to calculate on one particular day of the year, and then you have to pay zakat 2.5% on that. In the categories of people who can receive zakat is mentioned in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 60. The first is the fuqara, that is the poor. Second is the masakin, that is the needy. Third is the amilun, those who are involved in collection of the zakat. Fourth is Mu'alla Futwal Khulub, those whose hearts are inclined towards Islam. Fifth 
other riqab that is zakat can be given to free a captive or in bondage sixth are the gharimun those who are debtors seventh is fi sabilillah zakat can be used in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala and eighth is the ibn sabil that's the wayfarer so there are eight categories specified in the glorious quran to whom zakat can be given the punishment for those people who refuse to pay zakat or are neglectful in paying of zakat and a beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it's mish hadith of tabrani that the person who does not pay zakat his wealth will be destroyed and the prophet said further in the sahih hadith of sahih al targib volume number 1 hadith number 758 that those who are neglectful in paying of zakat there will be a calamity brought to them maybe like famine etc further the beloved prophet said in ibn majah in al hakim that those who are neglectful those who refrain from paying zakat allah subhanahu wa taala will not send rain on them if it wouldn't have been for the animals and cattle that they have rain would have been sent down to them and allah says in the quran in surah tauba chapter number 9 verse number 34 and 35 that those who bury gold and silver and spend it not in the way of allah subhanahu wa taala that means do not give zakat announced to them a grievous penalty the wealth which they hoarded will be put into the fire of hell and with it they'll be branded on their forehead on their flank and on their back and it will be told to them taste the wealth which you hoarded and a beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said it's mentioned in hadith sahih bukhari book of zakat volume number 2 hadith number 1403 that those people who do not pay zakat on the day of judgment their wealth which they have hoarded on which they have not paid zakat would be made into a snake which is a bald headed snake bald headed male poisonous snake which has marks above the two eyes and it would be wound around the neck and it would sting at the cheeks and would say that i am your wealth i am your wealth which you treasured and the prophet says and repeats the verse of the Quran Allah that revealed in Surah Imran chapter 3 verse 108 that those who covet the wealth which Allah has given and thinking that will be good to them and not spend in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the wealth will be wound down the neck and it will not benefit them so this is a punishment for a person who does not give zakat for the beloved prophet said it's mentioned in Sahih Muslim volume number 2 in the book of zakat hadith number 2161 the beloved prophet said that those people who do not give zakat on the cattle these cattle their horns would be broken or would be twisted or would not be with horns and with the horns they would gore the master and some of the cattle would trample beneath the feet and this will continue happening till the full day and one day will be equal to 50000 years that's the day of resurrection and then it will be decided whether these people will go to hell or heaven further it's mentioned in the hadith of bukhari volume number 2 in the book of zakat hadith number 1399 and 1400 there were some arabs who revolted they don't want to pay zakat hazrat abu bakr may allah peace be with him said that these arabs muslims who do not want to pay zakat he will wage a war against them so hazrat tumar may allah be pleased with him said that how can you wage a war against them because the messenger muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said that only wage a war against those who worship anyone besides allah and not say la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah but then hazrat abu bakr says that but these people are breaking the law and even differentiates between zakat and salah that is fard and does not give zakat even if he does not give one she kid or one lamb he used to give at the time of the prophet now if they abstain from giving zakat he will wage a war against them and hazrat umar may allah peace be with him says that allah subhanahu wa taala has opened the heart of hazrat abu bakr may allah peace be with him and whatever decision was right so there is a grievous penalty for those who do not pay zakat may allah subhanahu wa taala protect us from not paying the zakat
and being amongst those who will be punished as a result of that. Dr. Zakir Naik. Amen.